Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How y'all doing? Welcome to our kitchen. Come on in and get you a seat. We'll get you some coffee. Some y'all's coffee. Now, someone asked us mm, probably a month ago at Shepherd's Pie, and I said, I don't really do a lot of Shepherd's Pies, but sometimes we do. Shepherd's Pie is a good upscale redo for us, anyway, for leftovers. Now, I haven't fixed this particular one. Most of the time I use it when I have leftover hamburger meat or leftover meatloaf, I turn it into shepherd's pie. Tonight, I'm going to use that chicken that we fixed yesterday. It was so good. Um, it was really good. It was at the moment. And this is just an 8 by 8 Pyrex uh, dish that we have sprayed. It's got plenty of spray on it. And this is the dressing that was left yesterday that we made up. This is not all the dressing. The other we froze. Uh, we only baked the one pan and we froze the other raw and we will grab it on one night and say, hmm, let's get some dressing going. So that'll be wonderful. Now I'm just mashing this down in this grease pan. I don't want it to burn. I want it to be just right, okay? And I'm just mashing it all down in here. This was good, wasn't it, Mama? Yeah, everything was good, Jess. I posted a picture of our finished once it came out. Now, this is the one that we made with the apples and all that. So, this is what we're doing. Now, we also had some macaroni and cheese in there that wasn't uh, yesterday's meal, but it was the other day's meal. And I'm going to put it in here as well. So, Rick, basically what you're doing is it's a, a leftover layered dish. So, this is the cornbread dressing. It's in there pretty good. Mama is going to go ahead and get started. I know she's wanting to go. She's like, will you let me do mine? No. I have cut this corn on the cob. This is peaches and cream up into some little niblet bites. Mama's going to fix them in the stack cooker here. All I'm going to do is lay them in here. That ain't a hair, Mama. Don't say silk. that. Silk. A silk. Thing. It's not a hair. It's a silk. Corn silk. Okay, and I'm gonna just put some salt over. This is just pink Himalayan salt. We've kind of switched to the salts, the ancient salt, ancient sea salt with the minerals and the sea and the pink salt with the minerals because it helps with blood pressure if you're going to use salt. Get away. You want black pepper on a mama? No, I don't want pepper. Oh, okay. You can pepper No, I will, yeah. I won't put none on now. So this is just corn. Nothing else in here. You're going to put water or anything? I'm going to put this butter in the moisture from that. I hope it will just steam it. This is just softened butter. I'm just going to spread some over each year, and it will slide down, melt down, and run down in the bottom. Mm -hmm. You're getting it from the top to the bottom, aren't you? I'm hoping it will do that. Oh, yeah. And these little corn nibbles are probably easier to eat. These are some that came from the I guess farmer's market. Yeah. And then sea salt and butter, and that's it? Yeah. And how are you going to cook them? Uh, I'm going to try that six minutes and see. Well, I might have mine put together by the end. We've already got the easy bake going, and I'll get it in there. And I, nothing really has to happen to this one except just warm it up. Just warm it up really good. Okay? So this is just your cornbread dressing in the bottom of this. Well, I'm going to to turn that on after you put that in the oven. Okay. Because it roars so loud. Right. This is just macaroni and cheese. So what's in macaroni and cheese? A little pasta, a little cheese sauce. Uh, so that's what you're putting in here. Is you've got the noodles and cheese. It sounds like a casserole, doesn't it? Well, that's what this is, basically. This is just going to be Moltenly delicious, awesome gooey cheese and pasta. 
you can put vegetables in here, and I'm going to put a little leftover green beans, just because we got them. We're trying to cut down on leftovers. We're trying to always make sure that we're good stewards of what we've been given. And these green beans are absolutely delicious. So on my macaroni and cheese, I'm putting these peanut green beans. You can put mixed vegetables here. If you don't have any leftover green beans, put you a can of mixed vegetables right here. Be absolutely delicious. Might even be better than just plain old peanut green beans. Now this is that chicken we had left. And I just deboned it last night when we got through, yesterday evening at lunch, really. And put it in this cup and I've kind of shredded it up. This is the, well, the protein. Just this shredded up chicken. Make sure there's no bones, nothing like that. Now, if you want to put a can of cream or something in here, you can. But I'm going to make up our topping right now. So that's it. Okay? That's all that we just layered our leftovers in there. You do the same. You have, have that. I'll put this one over here. Because it's a messy bowl. Yes, ma'am, I'm through. Now, these are mostly Yukon gold mashed potatoes. So in here is butter and cream, salt and pepper. Okay, that's what's in here. And this was mashed potatoes from yesterday. Yukon gold. Uh, not my favorite for mashed potatoes, I'll be honest with you. But if you have them, and we have them, and that's good. But in the bowl, the Yukon gold goes. Then, this is sour cream. One of Mama's favorite. I'm also gonna use the clean side of the spatula. And I'm gonna get out about, that water's fine in there because I need a little moisture. I'm gonna get out about a fourth of a cup of sour cream. And just to prove to y'all that I can do this, even with the spatula being dirty on one side, clean as a whistle. All right, so that's gonna be the binder. Mashed potatoes already got a binder in them. This is just four Mexican four cheese, and I'm gonna put it in here. That's about half a cup. See there. Now to that, I'm gonna add this y'all's brand, and this is your onion powder, your garlic powder. I'm gonna do a shake, shake, shake all over that. No salt, no pepper. It's already in. It's in there. It's in there because you got leftover mashed potatoes. And y'all know I love this stuff. It's just parsley. But parsley does bring out the flavor. And I put about good two tablespoons of so parsley. Now let's just combine all this mashed potato goodness, parsley goodness, the y'all seasoning goodness, the cheese goodness, sour cream goodness into these mashed well, potatoes. This little bath that was in the yes, ma'am. Oh, well, that's too much. <laughs> Oh, mercy. If we didn't carry on with a bunch of foolishness, first of all, we wouldn't be up. Second of all, you all think, what's wrong with them? They're all stuck up tonight. Now, I, Mama, what do you feel about black pepper? Yeah, black pepper and it would be all right. All right. So let's put this, let's crack us a little bit of black pepper. I just didn't want it on my corn. Well, I didn't know if you turned on it or not, Mama. No, I didn't turn it on. We're just going to crack us some black pepper in here. Stir, stir. Now folks, first of all, this right here could be its own little separate dish. We call these um, loaded mashed potatoes. Sometimes, even when we have just plain old regular mashed potatoes, these Yukon Goals are wonderful done this way. You can see here all the goodness in there. Uh, you can make a whole other dish with this. It's almost like, it's very much like, it is like, this twice baked potatoes. That you take your center of your baked potato out, put it in a bowl, add your sour cream, all your flavorings, all your goodies, put it back in there and bake it again. But you don't have to have the hull. You can just use mashed potatoes and you can put these in a casserole dish and just bake them and brown them and they're delicious. It's twice baked potatoes. 
Now, on our chicken, macaroni and cheese, in our dressing in the bottom, that's acting as our uh, crust. Then we're just going to add our mashed potatoes right here on top. The easiest way to deal with a gum like this is just go ahead and dump it out. Just like this. And then you got this big pile here and you can just mash from the center. That way you're not pulling up chicken and pulling up your goodie under there. You're just mashing everything into place around the edges and you don't feel like you're having to watch and spread so gentle like. Now, this is not something you want to necessarily smooth out and do all that. Them little ridges and valleys in there are going to brown up golden delicious. So I'm just going to mash these around like this, like you would if you were doing a meringue on a pie. This is shepherd's pie, remember. Remember what we're up to. Now that is easy chicken shepherd's pie with mashed potato topping with sour cream, cheese, and all those vegetables and all that goodness down in there. Now, if you're worried about that macaroni and cheese in there, that is going to coat in with that chicken and that dressing, and it's going to be absolutely delicious. Now, we're just going to put this in the easy bake till it's bubbling and brown. Y'all have heard that before. Bubbling and brown meaning hot and a little toasted on top. In case you're ever wondering, what does bubbling and brown mean? It means hot. Uh-oh. Mama's dropped a set out of her ring again. Uh, Till it's hot on top. You can tell it to <laughs> Did you cut your toe off, Mom? No, my toes was I safe. heard say, it sounded like it hit the hardwood floor. Yeah, my toe was safe. Come on here, Mama, let's chat a while. I've been cleaned up the mess on this counter. I mean, this is an easy meal. You can upscale leftovers very easily and make a whole other little dish if you need to. Looks absolutely delicious. Thank you, Gina. Hey, Paul, how are you? What kind of oven is that easy bake? Rhonda, we have a link, um, a Amazon link below on the comments on every video we do. You can go there and you can find the Easy Bake Oven, which is really a KitchenAid. And it has a air fryer attachment. It has a dehydrator. It has all these little bells and whistles. Now, what do we use most is the air fryer and the regular bake. We got one, uh, the model before this one. Mama loved it, absolutely loved it. And it saves you having to use the big oven all the time. You know, when you heat up that big oven in the summertime, you've basically built a fire in the fireplace for the whole house. This Easy Bake don't take that much. It's not that hard to uh, heat. It's quick, it's easy. And we found our cast iron skillets fit in it. Uh, most of our, all of our nine by nine cast iron dishes, and most of our other ones we use, I don't think a 9 by 13 will quite fit if it has any kind of handles on it. It has to be smooth side. Um, but we love it for that. And if we do need it, we'll just fire up the big oven. But uh, it's quick, it's easy, and uh, Mama loves it. So when the big air fryer, you ever had air fryer, you know, for a, a Christmas or two there, that was all people talked about. Kind of like the Instapots were. People really want... Mama said, I'd like to try one of those air fryers to use less oil. And I said, let's look at them. So we started looking into them. Now, Mama has a big kitchen, but we don't have any counter space on this wall. So all we have is right there. And it's not tons of space. And she didn't want to give up any counter space. And I said, well, here is a KitchenAid uh, oven like you have with an air fryer option and basket and all that stuff. And I said, uh, yours is you know, you've had it a few years. So we ended up gifting it to someone and then I bought her this one and we've used it, what, a year or two? 
and it's wonderful and she uses the air fryer and she really likes that so that's how we ended up with it would we like one of those Rhonda um it's KitchenAid and you can get it off from Amazon and uh, lots of people have gone there and you can follow our link which will be right here in the comments below uh could you uh, Oh, Jean, you're having Tupperware problems? I will also post the customer service for Tupperware uh, as well. And they can help you with anything on our account. Uh, they're glad to help you any way they can, and I'll be glad to post that. Uh, Nola has it. She might pop it in there on your comment if she sees it. Uh, well, she does that a lot of times. Uh, Hannah says, nice. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, New York. Oh, what a neat address. James, do you get your mail at Sleepy Hollow? I thought that would be neat. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at a house one time, and the name of the street was Butter and Egg Row. Road. Butter and Egg Road. And I thought, I would love to live on Butter and Egg Road. Can you imagine <laughs> the conversation she could start with Butter and Egg Road? <laughs> Good times. Shepherd's pie leftovers from yesterday's dinner. Oh, Mary, uh, yeah, that's what we're fixing. I hope John and Mama I have a great night. Sleepy home. Oh. I don't know. Did they repeat? I got mine at Walmart. It was marked down. Um, Pam, they have a, a lot of places. That you put the uh, ovens. They have some with French style doors on them. Open in the middle. They have. This one is a good size. But it's not too big. It don't take up too much room. It's not too close to your cabinets. to get them hot that way. So, out of the ones we looked at, this one served our purposes the best. But certainly, you may find one anywhere. I'm just telling you where we got ours. How do you clean the inside of the top of the chopper? It comes apart. It all comes apart. We just put it, you can put it in the dishwasher. Or you can just put it in your sink and wash it. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. But the top will come. Yeah, off. the top you twist off, and then we just wash it with everything else. Uh, you're talking about the string mechanism. We put that in the dishwasher. We put that in the dishwater, and rinse it and let it dry. It's a nylon string. It's not going to really hurt the string, and there's nothing. In there that it really hurts as well. Mom, you need something to drink? You want some coffee? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all's coffee. Hey, John and Mama from Manchester, Tennessee. Wow. Now I don't know where you're where you're from, but we have a Manchester not far from here. Uh, but I think that's just like a little community. Let's see here. Uh, meat, less potatoes, gravy, and corn. Oh, dude, that sounds good. Looks like he's getting too brown on top. He ain't even starting to get it brown. Some of y'all are saying something about shepherd's pie. You make your. Uh, most of the time, you'll find it with hamburger meat. Um, with mashed potatoes on top and, um, come back. We're back. Uh, but you can make it any way you want to. Uh, it's, shepherds probably just use whatever they had too. And I would say the probability of a shepherd killing beef out, out in the field and having plenty of it to eat would be a lot less than maybe a pheasant or a bird or whatever it might be in the bush that night or day. So uh, I'm sure the original shepherd's pies were very much made with chicken. But uh, you can look them up. There's different recipes. There's different things out there. It's not uh, in stone. They're all different. This is a leftover shepherd. Pie. This is a leftover. It's basically just leftovers covered with mashed potatoes made into a whole new little ensemble there. Hi from Massachusetts. Is that I well? Or I can't really see if it's L O or I O. I can't see nothing with Hey there, John and Mama from California. Oh, hello. How are you guys doing, Ruth? We're doing great. We're blessed. Um, the sun's shining here. We've had rain and storms for two days, but 
We've had storms this morning. They say we might get storms tonight later on. We'll take what we get. I guess you we know will. why? Because we ain't got no choice. Yes, we will take what we get. That's what the good Lord sends us. That's what the good Lord sends us. We'll take it because we have no choice. I'm so glad we don't have a choice. Some of y'all would have it hot year round. Some of y'all would have it me in summer, 12 months out of the year. I'd have y'all in fall and spring, and I might give you a little winter. Uh, and then I'd Long give you. Summer. <laughs> yeah, you get a little summer. We'd have enough summer to grow a tomato. <laughs> I'm so thankful I'm not in charge of the weather because mm, 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 that would be too big of a challenge, wouldn't it be? All right, let's see who else is on here. Hi from Idaho. Well, hello, Sheila. Hi, John and Mama from Illinois. Hey, David McMillan. Janet. Hi from Chesterfield, Virginia. Chesterfield. We've been there. I think we've been to Chesterfield. Hey, Joyce, shepherd's pie is lamb, yes. Uh, cottage pie is beef. Thank you, Rebecca. Shepherd's pie is usually lamb, I think, but we've made it with beef here, ground beef usually. Uh, we call it all shepherd's pie. We call it all shepherd's pie. Cottage pie. Kind of like tissues. They're all Kleenex. I don't care what brand you get. <laughs> you can get them dollar and a quarter brand. You'll say, that's a Kleenex. Hand me a Kleenex. It's just a name. File is best after a hot summer. Vicki McMurray. Don't you know it. They ain't nothing better than those chilly nights. When the heat has done all the damage it can do. <laughs> and you wake up that morning and it's cool and crisp. And then you have you have a fire pit going. All that goodness. Mama's very popular. A toll free call. I bet it's important, Mama. That's my sister. Toll free? Toll free call. Yeah, Mama. I doubt that's your sister. Doing toll free calls. Oh, it's not her. I was thinking of. It usually says wireless caller when she calls. Yeah, wireless caller. Hey, Mama, what kind of lights did Noah use on the ark? Lights. What kind of lights did Noah use on the ark? Mm -hmm. Mama, thank you, Lights and bugs. <laughs> Lights, Noah, Ark, the great. I know all of them. Ark, Lights. What was Noah all about? The flood. Floodlights. Floodlights. <laughs> good job. Floodlights. <laughs> Mama gets them good. Please pray for me, my son, and grandson. We are homeless. Oh. Um, Bless their hearts. Is it Loretti? Loretti? Let's be praying for Loretti Wilson. Tony Phillips says he's praying. Y'all say a prayer for Loretti. L-O-R-E-T-T-I-E. -T -T -E. Hey, John and Mama. Hey, Sharon. How are you? It's so good to see y'all this evening. Get a talk and just enjoy. We've got Monday over with. If you don't like Mondays, go. It's gone. <laughs> Mondays, if you don't mind Mondays, fly. it's still gone. Uh, you just got four work days. If you started out with four, you'd think you'd send something good. Well, here we are. We just got four to go. I'm trying to see if we're brown and bubbling more. Um, I'm going to check and turn the corn off so it will be good. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have... You can put corn in a shepherd's pie like this or anything. Anything you want put. But we've got, we had those ears of corn and. Uh, it's not turning brown yet. Mom, you keep opening that door and we know we're going to brown them, huh? She used to tell me that when I was younger, well, quit opening the door. You're letting all the heat out. Now, she always opens the door. You can't see in that. It looks brown. It'd be black if you get most of the corn. <laughs> I'm trying to get a fat started. You just stepped out and got it. 
Mama's shirt is a beautiful color. Oh, Mama? What? Well, it's a blue one. Oh, it's a... What color is that, Mama? What do you... Well, it's a maca. It don't look the same on camera as it looks over here. Like a mint green or like It's a green. green. It looks blue on there. But it's, a but it's definitely it not blue. Like it's green. Blessed. blessed. T. Across the butterflies and a big old mason jar of tea. Y'all drink tea out of a mason jar. You, if he's in the south, you would. You know, they always say sweet tea is a south um, house wine. And a mason jar is what we prefer to drink it. I love drinking out of a mason we jar. We do have some. We do have some. But just a plain old cannon jar. I've drank out of those my whole life. In fact, not until these newfangled insulated mugs and stuff came out. Uh, I used to always drink out of an old uh, square cannon jar. Yeah. That was my it jar. It was like in between a quart and a pint. It wasn't. It was I drank out of it, and I tell you why I started drinking out of it. I read a thing about, like when you sleep, that spiders, you can eat spiders. And spiders are in your room. And I'm thinking, I don't see any spiders in there. And, but I was afraid, like I always take water to bed. I have for 112 years. I always take water to bed. Do you all do that? I think what caused it is when I was young, I had bedtime at 8.30. And mom and dad would be up, and their my bedroom was right off the living room, so the door, and then you was the living room. And I would hear them in there, and I would want to go in there, so I'd open that door and I'd say, "I'm thirsty. I want some water." <coughs> well, mama wised up very quickly, so we started going to bed, actually with a little Tupperware glass with a lid on it and a straw of water. She said, if you get thirsty, here's your water. Which I thought was a good idea until I realized that knocks me out of getting up and going in the living room. <laughs> My mom would say, you got water in there. Not so painful. <laughs> it was very kind and sweet when yeah. she said it. When she said, you get back in the bed, honey. <laughs> it's time for it's you not to go sleep. Go to bed. And I didn't get awakened in the morning like a, a butterfly landing on a rose either. I got awakened by the light coming on and her hollering, It's time to get up, feet on the floor, time to get out the door. Scoop the bus up in here for you. Don't you miss that bus. That's how I, it wasn't a gentle little. My cat, darling. No, I did say that. <laughs> In a dream. You didn't hear me because you're so sound asleep. Now I find it funny. As I got older, I have no problem getting up in the morning. I land at night because I was like, I've got to go in for a landing. I'm worn out. My, my body says, time for bed. You better find me a place because I'm going to be one. We're going down. And then at 4.30, I wake up at 4, 4.30, and then I debate, should I go ahead and get up or should I lay here? If I lay there and I doze back off to sleep, by 10 to 5, I'm awake again. But if I don't, at 4.30, I get on up. And like if Mama has an appointment or something like that, guess who gets to holler? Wake up! Feet on the floor. Time to get out the door. Me. You hate it, don't you? Yeah, I hate it. I did all my life. It's time to make it. I knock on her bedroom door. Mama. Wake up. You do that when I don't have to get up sometimes. <laughs> I don't wake you up. Yeah, you do sometimes. When? When do I ever wake you up? When you've been a cheering, you'll say, get up, it's time, get up. Like on Saturday morning, <laughs> I'll say, are you going to the farmer's market? You got a plan today? You want to go somewhere? You going junkin'? You going to the, what do you do? 
Uh, I was, let me sleep. I said, it's 7.30. You gonna sleep all day? A lot of times, though, she'll say, yep, let's go somewhere, and she's up and ready to go. But sometimes not. The last two weeks, we've been regular world travelers. <laughs> I don't know about world travelers. Well, we've gone over five miles away from home. Yeah, I guess that is. Really Into cool. another state. Two weekends in a row, that's bad. But now we live on the Kentucky-Tennessee line. Our three miles away. Three miles. We use, if we travel three miles, we're out of state. It's nothing for us to cross the state line on a daily basis. Uh, just a part of our everyday life. It always hangs. We always have considered Kentucky as part of our hometown. You know, we've got literally, like if we go, it's not even three miles from the line. It's, if by road, it's three miles. But literally, we can go two, two and a half miles and be in Kentucky. It's right there by the park. It's just right here. We live about two and a half miles from the park, and our park is on the line, and it's, it goes right into Kentucky. So we've always considered Williamsburg and Corbin as part of our hometown as well as Jellico. My whole life, we went to Corbin for everything, Williamsburg for everything. We went to the TGNY that was at Williamsburg. How many of y'all remember the TGNY? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see. <laughs> TGNY was our Walmart, folks, back in the day. Everyone went to the TGNY. That's what it was. TGNY. And uh, that's where you went. What was that? Hex. 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 Y'all remember Hex? The TGNY. When I was a kid, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Long John Silver's, TGNY, and Hex, I thought it was the only places you could go. <laughs> like on a Sunday, we'd go to the Kentucky Fried Chicken to eat out. And then we'd go to the TGNY to shop. And then we'd run over to the Hex, which was right across the road. And that was it. That was a, that was a good day out with them on. Did y'all remember TGNY or am I, is that just a local thing? I know they had more than what the one that we had here in Williamsburg. Y'all stopped. It's, we've, I have bored you all to the point you ain't going to be out here. Not bored you. Doctor. We love TGNY in Oklahoma. Oh yeah. I love Michael, we love TGNY. Him and Good evening from Corbin, Kentucky, Bethany. Yeah. You're right here in our hometown, Jellico. Bethany, you know where Jellico is. It's close. It's 30 miles from Jellico to Corbin. You, it's, it's like if you go to Knoxville, Knoxville, it can take you 30 miles to get from one side to the other to get to something you want to go. So it's just like one big town. Bethany can tell you all about it. Bethany, you remember the TGNY at the Williamsburg? Did y'all have one in Corbin? Yens had roses. Now, if we was really exotic and like going to really go way out there, we'd go to the Corbin and we'd go to the Kmart to get them blue light specials and we would go to the roses. Do y'all remember Kmart blue light specials? They had a little square box with a pole with a blue light on top of it. And them associates would pack that pole. It was on a grocery cart set on it, wasn't it? Sometimes more, but at my, when I was a kid, it was fancier. And they would announce over the intercom, we had, ladies and gentlemen, we have a blue light special in sporting goods. Come on over and get such and such for such and such price. You would be smart not to be leaning around the aisle. Oh my goodness, Mom. Tender enough, it's tender. It's hit me right in the face. Mm. Smell. Oh, that smells like summertime and gardening. Oh, that smells wonderful. But when they announced the TGNY Blue Light Special, you would be smart Kmart. to get out. Cake Mart. Not TGNY. You'd be smart to get out of the aisles because there would be some uh, a herd of people headed for that product. 
Sometimes it was a knife in a certain section or uh, jogging pants or children's clothing or now that was the floral time. and craft. And everybody in the store would go, oh. well, that would end. And then they would move it somewhere else. And then they announce it again. Healthy beauty aids, lipstick, 32 cents. Every woman in there would knock over children, cloak. It was like a herd. And you got a little stick around it and you took it to the front and you got it for that cheap price. It was exciting. There was a little competition to it. It was a fun day out with the mom. <laughs> I didn't fail because I was, I used to be littler. Mama was scared. She'd, she'd jump right in the middle of some of them clothes. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't battle with them, somebody. Oh. oh, and somebody would tell you, it was like a bragging right. It's, I got this at the Kmart on the Blue Light Special. It was a rite of passage to get something on the blue light special, wasn't it, Mom? Yeah. Where are you going with that? I may use that. Oh, you may use it. I won't take it. How's the shepherds doing over it's there? It's getting a little brown. Is it? Mm -hmm. well, it ain't good. made it there yet. That's what we're looking for. There. A little brown on top of them taters. And that makes it delicious. Is it bubbling? see it bubbling a little, I think. Either I see it bubbling or I've made that up in my mind to make it sound like it's ready to eat. It's quite ready to taste. Is it bubbling? Why it looks sure. brown. Why sure it's a bubbling? Why sure it's a bubbling, she said, and it's brown. It's Do you want me to get that out of there? No. I it's hot. It's brown on the peaks and brown. Oh, that's what you're looking for. That's perfection. Mama's as independent as a hog on ice. You ever heard that saying? Let's give it a look over. Let's fly over. So this is our shepherd's pie tonight. You see how those peaks have brown? That's the reason you don't want to just smooth it out. It's like meringue on a pie. It just browns up and it's bubbling. I can see it bubbling up the sides. All that deliciousness is coming through. And it's got a little crust on top. Yeah. Uh -oh. We've got our corn here. We're ready to go with everything. I got my coffee. And look at here. Mama's even brought out these. As a child, we had these. I've always remembered having these. Now I think you've got a single, maybe a pointer. And the newer ones. These are old. Old. Yes. Little bitty corn cobs. You stick them in the end of each cob and voila, you got handles and it don't burn your little fingers. Well, there's a piece of corn on my arm. Here, I'll set that one. We might need to put it back on there, Mama. Well, I'll see. So let me demonstrate these wonderful products. I know they make they make big ones now. These I've are a little small. Little big ones, so you just find the cob here. And you poke this holder down in there and you can pick it up. Now, you see how hot that was. And you stick this one in here and now you can just sit and do like this. But you all know all that. You gonna do your own? I'm sure. I'll practice over here. Well, look at that. I'm so proud of you, Mama. Put the lid back up. That'll be good. Now, let's get this shepherd's pie over here on the, out the cheap seats back here in the back. Bring him over here where we can. Let me get my pot over here. I'm not going to use this after all, Mama, because that's already on there and it looks pretty the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, you set this here and I'll set it over there. No, let me do it. Oh, it's a. I just can't scoot that pad over here. All right. So here is our shepherd's pie. See how the peaks are nice and brown? And see how you, listen here. Can y'all hear that? Probably not. 
The mashed potatoes made a little crust on top of there. Let's go right down this corner. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Get a little touch of every layer. It's just like a real pie. That first piece is the hardest one to get out. And I'll just scoop deep and pull straight up. There's that chicken, them noodles. Now, Mama, be careful. There could be a stray bone because that was a whole chicken. But I think we we picked it out pretty good. Mm -hmm. Here's all that goodness. Look at that. That macaroni and cheese, those green beans, that chicken, a little bite of the dressing in the bottom. That's pure goodness right there. I don't need all of that, please. Mm -mm. Put that on your plate. She want to eat cheese like a bird. Do y'all know people tell you you like a bird? It could be insulting because a bird eats three or four times their body weight every day. I probably about to do that. Now you think of that, people eating like a bird is a little bit. But when you're eating three or four times your body weight every day, here's to you. Mm -hmm. They spend the biggest part of the day then eating something. Yeah, they do. Well, when they have time to sing and fly around. I don't know, Mama, but you know, it's it's strange to me. Birds eat worms and meat and seeds and berries and all that stuff. And they're little. Poor old cows run around all day long. They walk everywhere they go. They eat nothing but salad with no salt, no pepper, no dressing. <laughs> and they big. That's what I tell the doctor. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I don't like greens because that's how come like I Like I tell the doctor, he said, you need to start eating more salad. I said, you don't do that much for cows. <laughs> that's why I'm like I am. I eat a lot of salad. <laughs> I'm just saying. Let's bless our food. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food. We thank you for nourishing our bodies, dear Lord. And we just pray for everyone here tonight. We just pray for each and every prayer request. And Lord, as our children return to school, we just pray for a hedge protection on each and every one of them. And be with us as we go our ways, dear Lord, and as we go to and from work. And just always watch over and lean down and direct us. In your name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. This is just like downtown. Look at that. Now, that is good. You can call it shepherd's pie. You can call it casserole with potatoes on top. Chicken casserole would be fine with me. But it's chicken and dressing and macaroni and cheese and delicious potatoes and some green beans. If I'd throw in a can of veg aisle, it probably would have been a little prettier. But I don't know if it would have tasted any different. I don't know. Probably would have. Let's try the potatoes first. I want to try that little potato. Something about that little potato said to me... Let's try that. Mm, the potatoes alone are good. Oh, yeah. If you don't like nothing else, we'll scrape the potatoes off and eat that. So now, let's get the whole full bite. That's a little bit of everything. Did you try everything? Mm -hmm. And what do you think? That's good. This is a reminder. Water like you said, the potatoes are extra good on it. Mm. I'm going to say this, Mama. No offense to your cooking skills. But those mashed potatoes are better tonight than it was last night. As far as the Yukon Go That's potatoes. That's not an insult. <laughs> as far as the Yukon Go potatoes go. Mm -hmm. We like Yukon Go, but we like them well, baked. Well, I'll give them this. They had to set till the dressing got done. And they, they just, we both said yesterday, we like, what do you call them, Irish potatoes? Yeah. Regular white potatoes, whatever. More for mashed potatoes than we do the Yukon Go mm -hmm. ones. But we love baked Yukon Go. And we love it when we put the sun cream and the flavors in with it. So I love Yukon Go, it's just not as mashed as well. But they would have been Hotter and fresher, but uh -huh. we hadn't put them on earlier. But they're good like this. I like the dressing mm -hmm. and the chicken flavor, and that macaroni and cheese is good, and you get the little hint of potato on top. Mm -hmm. It's a good 
leftover upscale redo. Isn't it, Mama? Yeah, it is. Totally different. Now let's try this little tiny corn niblet. One of these cute little corn. Mmm. Oh. That's delicious, Mom. I know it. Man. Peaches and cream corn is always good. And that was just six minutes in the stack two? No, I put it nine minutes. Mmm. It's delicious. Mmm. Don't we have a meat in my mouth? I don't know. You might. Mama thinks she's missing a meat. Mm. That is good, Mama. Mm -hmm. You got anything you want to add tonight? No. Thank you for the Hey Mama joke. What that kind? What kind of lights did Noah use? Well, of course, flood lights. Keep the your mom, keep the hey mamas coming. We enjoy those. We haven't had them in a while, but we certainly do like them. Um, it's sunshiny. It's pretty. Mama's got a meeting. I may have a meet with Maggie in the yard. She's demanding like that. She's up here right now. She's been demanding all day. She's getting old and demanding. Maggie, not Mama. You don't want to say me too. <laughs> Thank you. I just dropped my food off my fork. Now, how haphazardous is that? Just talking about me is fine. I wasn't talking about you. I was uh, you're never demanding, Mama. I wish you was more demanding because uh, you don't let me do stuff for you. And I'm like, let me do that. Quit. Get off that. Don't be on that ladder. We had that conversation Saturday. Don't make work. We didn't. I didn't get hurt, though. I didn't say you got hurt, I said we had the conversation. Mm -hmm. But I did all that. This time. Mm -hmm. But we had I the conversation. Get off that ladder, Mama. <laughs> Don't you find another step. <laughs> what on earth am I going to do? Folks, thank y'all for being with us. Thank you for enjoying our little presentation tonight of shepherd's pie in our opinion i know there's different recipes but this was an easy chicken shepherd pie for us and those mashed potatoes are delicious on top of that and uh, just give it a whirl if you've got some leftovers put them together they're good i don't like everything put together but this little combo tonight worked out real good i don't believe i'd like it all stirred together but no i don't want it stirred layered it's a little different you notice i didn't stir Oh, y'all have a good night. Have a blessed night. Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. And who knows, we might cook up something else. Say good night, Mama. Good night, Mama, and God bless you. Bye-bye.